Hi, or welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. There has been a more mixed feel to things recently, but are the changeable conditions here to stay as we head through the next two weeks? Well, let's see how things may develop. Now, here's a picture at 18 GMT on Wednesday the 23rd. We've got high pressure centre to the north. There is some showery rain there, mostly in western counties. That said, it is mainly dry. Now, as I run the sequence, what we see is for outbreaks of rain push into western counties, northern areas as well at times, but they struggle to progress eastwards into central and eastern parts of Britain. There will be some patchy rain, I think, in those areas, but not a great deal. This is the picture at midday on Saturday. You can see areas of high pressure to the southwest and to the east of the UK. Now, continuing this forwards, there's further rain at times in the north and west, but high pressure is having a good deal of influence, and that's, that's staying the case until the middle part of next week. The sequence here finishes on Thursday, the 1st of May. The Atlantic isn't making much progress eastwards there, with high pressure centred over Scandinavia. So, all in all, it looks like there will be a lot of dry weather in central and eastern parts of Britain, wetter in the west and the north. Here's the upper air temperature and jet stream sequence for UK there inside the red circle. The mottled shaded area shows where the jet is tracking. Now as I run it, what we see is that green shading over UK for much of a period indicates fairly close to average temperatures aloft, but later on the yellow shading begins to push northwards. There is the potential at least for much warmer air to make inroads through the second half of the first week. So what does that all mean though in terms of the actual conditions that we can expect? Well, let's see. This is the picture on Thursday the 24th, temperatures on the left, rainfall on the right. It's dry across virtually the whole of the UK. With that said, there are outbreaks of rain starting to push in from the west across Ireland through the afternoon. The highest temperatures according to this, Wales, western England and the south, maybe 16, 17, 18 degrees, a little bit cooler as you head northwards there into Northern Ireland and Scotland. Moving forwards to Friday, outbreaks of rain struggling as they push eastwards they are becoming more and more fragmented and slow moving. Temperatures very similar to the previous day into the weekend and those area, that area of rain is still trying to push eastwards but it's fragmenting and really becoming nothing as it reaches central and eastern counties apart from bringing more cloud. The highest temperatures there in the southeast and East Anglia, but not a huge range even as you head into northern parts of the UK. But by Sunday, there are some changes here. We've got warm air starting to filter up and temperatures reaching 21, 22 Celsius, quite possibly in central and eastern counties. So possibly warm by this point in those areas. It is cooler still though as you head northwards and westwards and that's because there are some outbreaks of rain. You can see how once more they don't make much progress southwards and eastwards. It's mostly the north and the west where, where the wet conditions are likely to be. The following two days, so Monday and Tuesday, patchy rain there according to this in southern central regions. These charts are generated from the same computer model run as the initial animations were, but amounts not really great at all and temperatures quite respectable. The temperatures though from this computer model are a little bit lower than they are from some of the others as I will illustrate later. Now this is a Morgreps G temperature profile for London going through the first week. It's the ensemble model which the Met Office run and each line on this graph represents one of the forecasts from a run within it and the trend is clearly upwards. With that said, there is a bigger spread there on the 26th. A number of runs are cooler and a number are warmer. So there is some divergence there. It looks like there are two clusters. But if we jump ahead to the following day, the uh, range is narrowing and the trend is clearly upwards. And by the end of the week, 30th of April, the 1st of May, there are some indications there that we could see temperatures reaching around 25 Celsius. That would be the first time, I think, this year. So possibly a warm or very warm end of the week. And the 
postage stamp charts here help to explain why that could happen. The one on the left is for Monday the 28th and the one on the right is Tuesday the 29th. You can see the yellow shading which shows very warm air aloft is moving up from the uh, southern Europe across um, Spain and France and towards the United Kingdom and some of that could reach us and hence the higher daytime temperatures uh, resulting the, the possibility of it becoming warm or even a very warm. Here are the two meter temperatures for previous uh, postage stamp charts were showing the values aloft at about 1500 meters above sea level. These are the forecast values down at the surface for Tuesday the 29th in the afternoon. A lot of the runs going for around 21, 22 or 23 degrees and as I've said 25 would not be out of the question. Now rainfall, the forecast aggregates for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models both have significant amounts in southern and central regions but it's very important I think to highlight that that is rain which has already fallen at the time of recording this video. It fell through the early part of a Wednesday morning. Therefore not a great deal more in the southern and eastern parts of the United Kingdom. It's mostly in Northern Ireland and Western Scotland and perhaps the southwest of England as well. Moving forwards to the 10 day accumulations, they haven't changed a great deal apart from in the west where they have increased a little bit, but not a great deal of rain falling anywhere according to these through the day five to day 10 part of the forecast period, indicating that high pressure is likely to become more influential in all areas. But in more general terms, what do the determinist models show as we head towards the end of the first week? Do they all agree with each other or are they branching off and producing very different scenarios? Now here's the GFS on Wednesday the 30th of April, the high pressure centre there basically to the east, the northeast, and we've got southerly or southeasterly flow moving up across the UK, low pressure to the southwest and to the west there quite a long way in the Atlantic. The Canadian model, very similar. The German icon, high pressure more dominant across all areas. The European ECM, more like the uh, Canadian and GFS models, the high pressure center to the east, the south or southeasterly flow with some warm air spreading northwards. The artificial intelligence a version of the same model, quite similar. And finally, the UK Met Office Global, perhaps a little bit more nuanced with high pressure areas to the southwest and to the east, having a lot of influence though across the UK. So taking them all together, the picture towards the end of the first week looks like being a mainly settled one, not a completely settled one, but I would expect there to be a lot of dry weather and the potential for it to be quite warm, warm or even very warm. It would all depend on exactly how these pressure blocks fit together. But certainly it looks like it would be driest in the east of the United Kingdom, the most settled in the east. Now, how do things develop as we head through week two? Does that high pressure dominated theme continue or not? Well, of course, at this range, it's just about the trends and probabilities using the ensemble data. So as I often do, let's start with the 16 day GEFS plot for London. Across the top, 850 HPA temperatures. The signal strongly is for them to be above the average, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean, staying well above the thick black line, the 30 year norm for most of the second week. It's just towards the end there where it's dipping back down. And I wanted to highlight that although there is quite a big spread developing, that's, that's mostly because we've got a few very warm runs starting to show their hand there. You can see they're going close to 15 Celsius aloft. Remember, these are values at about 1500 meters above our heads. So there is the potential for it to be very warm, at least in the south, through parts of the second week. Will there be much rain around? Well, no is the answer. It's quite dry. Although there are a few big spikes which are showing up there. So it wouldn't be entirely out of a question if we saw some heavy rain in southern parts of Britain, but on the whole, the signal is for dry periods to 
dominate maybe towards the end there the chance of rain ticking up a little bit but all in all not a great deal now the two meter temperatures for london the maximums across the top here through the days the minimums here so the nighttime lows quite a lot of orange ready orange starting to appear now for the first time those runs going for between 21 and 25 there's even a little bit of a dark red there the runs which may go up to 30 degrees but i think three percent indicates there's just one in the ensemble set overnight lows well still quite a lot of light green appearing but it's the yellow shading which is now dominating for much of the second week 11 to 15 so what we're seeing here is a much more summery feel to things as we head through into the second half of the spring into the end of april and into the start of may nighttime lows starting to become possibly quite uncomfortable for some people in the london area and the daytime highs more like summertime values than spring ones according to this at least although i think i think i'll just point out that the majority uh, of runs in these columns are into the orange category so 16 to 20 but as i say there is an increasing signal for warm or very warm conditions to start appearing and overnight lows not dipping so much now the nights of course very short up to manchester um, very similar to the london uh, graph although probably a greater risk of rain throughout the second week for more spikes showing up on, on the lower part of the chart and it suggests that the atlantic will have some say in the weather particularly of course in western parts of the united kingdom the two meter temperatures for manchester following similar patterns to the london ones albeit at a slightly lower level so there's less of the orangey red there the 21 to 25 degree runs but still a good deal of the orange shading the 16 to 20s the nighttime lows also lower than they were in london up to glasgow it's a similar trend in terms of uh, 850 hpa temperatures although what you notice here is that we don't have any bringing that very warm air mass so it's going to be pushing up if it does from southern Europe across southern Britain into central areas but according to this there isn't a chance of it reaching Scotland. Rainfall risk is ongoing but it doesn't look especially wet here even. The two meter temperatures lower than Manchester which were lower than London so through the days it's the yellows which are dominating 11 to 15 degrees and the night times much cooler still quite a lot of dark green here and lots of light green dark green indicating values falling low enough for ground frost but i think what these uh, data tables have illustrated is that the frost risk even the ground frost risk is now rapidly reducing in the southern half uk and it's increasingly becoming confined to northern areas rainfall through the second week the charts generated here are from the ecm ensemble data sets and they show the percentage risk of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week basically pretty low in all areas although the highest chance is in western scotland moving forward to the next three days in the percentage chance is ticking up a little bit but still it's quite low only between 10 and 30 percent in most parts of the uk somewhat higher though still in western scotland so i think this suggestion here is that the atlantic will be having some influence still but mostly just in the northwest of the united kingdom high pressure probably playing a big part in the weather and the mean surface level pressure data table for york suggests that too the yellow shading is dominant through the second week in these columns and those runs which go from between 1011 to 1020 millibars are mostly a little bit above the average there's some orange there those are strongly dominated by high pressure and a little bit of green and the amount of green is growing towards the end there runs which are bringing in areas of low pressure so it doesn't look like it's going to be a very robust area of high pressure through the second week which is sitting over the uk or close to it but it does look as though high pressure will be having a lot of influence on the weather 
and that's backed up by the snapshot chart from the GEFS for Saturday the 3rd of May. You can see mean surface level pressure around 1,020 millibars across the UK. A little bit different with the European ensemble uh, chart for the same time. High pressure is centered to the west, the southwest, and over here to the east, but probably having a good say in the UK's weather too. So I think taking all that together, what we're seeing through week two is a likelihood of a lot of dry periods, especially early on, but not completely settled. It doesn't look like we're gonna see one of those really strong areas of high pressure setting up shop over the UK. But with that said, there isn't much sign of activity from the Atlantic. So to summarize, week one, rain is possible in all areas, but the wettest conditions are likely to be in the north and the west. Fine periods, particularly in the south, and at times later on, they will be extending northwards. Temperatures trend upwards and there is that chance of it becoming very warm in the south. Week two, often dry and warm in the south and the east, with rain more likely in the north and the west. Through the second half of the period, the chance of more changeable and cooler conditions begins to increase. So, uh, there we have it. On the whole, I think quite a lot of dry weather, but especially in southern and eastern counties. Also, the possibility at least of it turning warm or very warm. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we record 25 degrees for the first time in the UK this year. That's not a definite by any means, but it does look like a distinct possibility. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. As ever then, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. In that way, you'll not miss any of my future updates. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks so much now. Bye.